Hi, this is Dr. Kay Sweetser from San Diego State University, and today I'm going to show you how to download your data that you've collected via Qualtrics and start to clean up your data file. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to log into Qualtrics. Uh, you can see I have a pretty big extensive Qualtrics account here with a lot of different studies loaded into it. In your Qualtrics dashboard, you will see next to the individual study that you want to look at, you'll see an icon that says results. You're going to go ahead and click on results. Now this is an active study that I'm currently um, uh, have open and I'm collecting data on. Um, so when you get to within your study, you're going to click in the view results section, which is already open, you're going to click on download data. And so this is going to take you to the place where you can set up how you want to download your data. Um, so right here, I'm going to go with everything that is set up as the default. However, I want to point out what this section here means, um, show answers as. If you say coded values for an item that was set up as a five-point Likert scale from strongly disagree to strongly agree, it's going to put it in your SPSS um, data set as in the variable view, one, two, three, four, five, and then it's going to, in the, um, I'm sorry, in the data view, it's going to set it up as one, two, three, four, five, and then in the variable view, in the back end, it's actually going to say one equals strongly disagree, two equals disagree, etc. And that is when you do coded as values. If you choose coded as text, that same five point Likert scale is going to appear in the data view as the word strongly disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, strongly agree. And then it's not going to have, because it's a string variable, it's not going to have anything over in the back end on the variable view definition. And so you actually would, to do any, any uh, data analysis, have to put that in there. So by choosing, which is the default coded values, for show answers as, you're actually saving yourself a lot of time, especially when you have a data set that has a lot of variables, um, which this particular data set does. So um, you want to keep everything as shown here, uh, everything with the defaults, and then you want to click down here for um, downloading the SPSS file. So I'm going to click on download SPSS file. You do see that you can do other types of the files, but you're going to have to do your data analysis in SPSS anyway, so you might as well do it there. So you can see this is going through the process and downloading it. I've actually already opened up the file um, on my screen, and so I want to go ahead and show you what it looks like. Um, so only about 24 people have filled out this particular study to begin with. Um, so it's going to be a small data set, but as you can see, it has a lot of different variables. It has 119 different variables that I have to um, process and clean up to get ready to even start doing the data analysis. So here I am in the variable view, and this is the definition of what the variable is called and what it, uh, what it is asking. In the data view, this is the front end where people have actually input their responses to, in this case, um, a post-test only online experiment. So in here, I see all of the answers that people have given for things. I'm going to come back to this in a minute. What I want you to do when you're cleaning your data is I want you to take that document that you've created called your SPSS Bible. And the SPSS Bible is merely a printout of your research study where you have handwritten in that, oh, these 11 relationship questions, well, I'm going to call the first question in the relationship measures REL1. I'm going to call the second question REL2. And so you have that handwritten on this SPSS Bible, and now you need to make the Bible match this in the variable view. So if I just kind of look at what the names and labels are here, names are the little pegs that you would have, so like REL1, REL2, REL3, and the label is the longer version uh, content in here. So 
Um, if you have an online experiment like this one does and you have all of these timing first click and, and these are for your cells, don't do anything with these for now. Uh, this will be something that I can show you um, how, to, to how to work with later. But now it looks like on this item I get to the very first thing and it looks like it was a semantic differential scale that asked about likelihood. Not at all likely was a 1 and very likely was a 7. Um, how likely would you be to, um, to use this particular uh, live shot is what the question is. So notice how these all start with the same text. These all start with the same text, etc. and etc. It's really hard to see in the label view what's unique about this variable. Um, so I'm going to go down to these questions because I recognize these as being the uh, relationship questions. And so these are going to be some easy ones for us to, to mess with. So this part of the question is the same for all of these from variable 60, which is Q42 underscore 12, all the way down to Q42 underscore 22. That's the same text to start with. That is unneeded at this piece. So I'm just going to um, delete that. And now, as I go through, I can see what is unique about the text in this particular variable and this is in the label. So I'm going to do this for all of my questions and then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I give them the right names. So I'm going to match up the name for this variable with the name that has on that was on my SPSS Bible. Now I'm not looking at an SPSS Bible right now so I'm just going to make the names up but I know that these are relationship questions. So I'm just going to make up that I'm going to call this rel1 and this that means it's the first one in the uh, relationship um, measures. And I'm going to make up that I'm going to call this rel2 and rel3 and so on and so forth. So when you clean up your data set, in this case we have about 119 variables that you need to do this with, you can see how quickly the process would move. Again, you're going to find what is the same in the very beginning and I'm just going to get rid of this. and just delete out and then give them the proper peg name over in the name column. So maybe I'll call this mill uh, is1 for military information subsidy. mill is2 who knows right so you're gonna make sure that this matches your SPSS Bible now the other thing I want you to do once you've got the names and labels correct is I just want you to scroll through to make sure that when you actually get to your values that everything is set up the way that you want it to be set up so here I am in an item that I know is a um, Likert scale and when I click on it it tells me one equals strongly disagree blah blah that's exactly what I wanted it to be and so go through and make sure one is yes two is no make sure that you have all of these set up automatically from Qualtrics from your import that everything looks good and if it's not in there then go ahead and clean it up. Now here's an item, I'm sorry, here's an item. How many, how many times in the past month have you worked with a public affairs officer? This was a ratio level item where people could actually write in what their score was. So I'm going to have a hot mess over on the data side. 
So I want to um, jump over to Q43 in the data side and I want to clean up that data so that it is all um, uh, exactly the type of data that it needs to be. So I'm just going to double click over here and I'm going to look through these and it looks like everybody put in a whole number. Uh, let's try to find something like age. Well, this was what year were you born? Everybody put that in. All right, but let's just say somebody instead of doing 75, let's say somebody had just wrote in 75. Well, the year you were born was not 75. It was 1975. So you would have to go in here and manually type in what that person meant. Now don't make things up. If somebody said two to three, then you need to decide, am I gonna put a two, am I gonna put a three, or am I gonna put the midpoint of that, 2.5, if it's like how often did somebody do something in a particular time period. It looks like everybody really input their data, minus this guy here, which only has four items, your zip code. So a zip code obviously has more than uh, four characters. It looks like everybody pretty much did a good job of um, filling out their numbers here, but this will probably not always be the case um, for you. So when it comes to age and things, you're going to need to actually clean up so that it is displayed the way that it should be displayed in here. And then what you do, once you make sure that all the numbers look good on the data side, and you have to do it in this order, you have to clean up the data view first, then you jump over to that item, and if it's not already numeric, you turn it into numeric. Um, so for example, where was that? How many? It was Q40, what was it? In the past month, Q43. If it's not already numeric, then you turn it into a numeric. So if it was string, which we know a zip code is going to be a number, but you see it's in here as string. So I'm gonna go in, and I'm gonna make sure that everything that's in here is a number. It is, this one is wrong, so I'm actually just going to delete that out because I can't guess what that guy's zip code was. And I'm gonna, now that I've, I've confirmed that the data is correct in the data view, I'm going to click on string and I'm gonna change it to numeric. And the width uh, a zip code is what is it? Six characters. I'll just put seven, just to be. I don't just so I don't lose anything. So in here, if I would not have done the uh, checking to make sure that everything was fine before I changed string to numeric, then it just would have deleted out the text that was in there previously. So you want to uh, clean up the data first and then change it from string to numeric. As I'm doing this process, I'm going to give this a special name. I'm going to call this, um, let's see, uh, whatever it's normally called, cleaning data, and then save that. So this is just telling me that I'm in the process of cleaning this file. So that is the quick and easy uh, description visually on how you quote clean an SPSS data file. You want to make sure that everything has a name that matches your SPSS Bible and that the labels are cleaned up such that you don't have the same block of text like you do in these items but instead you have whatever the unique prompt was like I did um, in showing you these items. Uh, then in the values, you want to make sure that the values are correctly set up so that if it was a five point Likert scale, you have the five Likert points right there. Um, and then that you have it saved as some kind of a name that distinguishes it from other versions of this data set. And that is how you clean up a data set.